Thanks for joining us. This is live with Miami East Community News, and our guest is South Miami City Commissioner Lewis Gill. Welcome, and thank you for being here. Thank you for having me, Michael. It's so, a pleasure to be here. Yeah, so here we are, September, I think it's 2021. The last year and a half seems to be like lost in this stuff that, that's out there. So let's talk about if we could start off how the city has been conducting its meetings and how we've adjusted to COVID and then as it goes away and as it comes back. Why don't you tell us about that? So the city is has a hybrid form of, of meetings. So you can dial in through Zoom. There's a Zoom link and in, in, in you can dial in. And there's also you can come in person wearing a mask and, and, and all the uh, COVID protocols. Um, same thing for as far as the actual chambers. We have the same thing. We have a safety glass between each commissioner, uh, which which is a good thing. Uh, um, uh, and so, uh, you know, it's it's really had a, a very little effect as far as productivity, I would say. And one of the great things that we have learned is what TV people have known for, for decades, which is you have your studio audience, but the real audience is out there, all right? We're in this never, never, except what Zoom did, it popularized this type of, of, of approach. And now, if you will, you know, on, on exercise machines, it's right there. Right. There. And you go, okay, so now it's completely filled our lives about having more options, right? I've seen, certainly in the last year and a half, weddings done like that, funerals done like that. And the first funeral I went to, there it was when on Zoom, and people from all over the world, all right, were there this happened to be a, a big uh, jewish guy who's known everywhere and so what ha so what happens is people can join in and so it's always i like when i listen to the commission meetings okay raise your virtual hand right? raise your virtual hand and so and it's like when i watch it I go this is so good all right to be able to do that and i like that there's the, the plastic the glasses in, right. be in between there and um this, the city's really made some some really neat moves in the last year and a half and two years. Let's talk about how what the city's done has improved the lives of the people that live and work in South Miami. So tell us some of those things as I uh, go ahead and get us online over here. Sure. So the city, um, uh, last year and a half, we've implemented a freebie. We've added solar panels to our 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 our, uh, our uh, community center and, and mobility building. We've uh, we're going to be increasing our uh, recycling to once a week next year. Uh, we've uh, expanded our bike lanes, bike sharrows, uh, and coming up in the next commission meeting, we're going to uh, uh, pass uh, a resolution uh, so that uh, we can get um, 117 residents that are now on well water, off of well water, and, 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 and connected to the county. Where is that area? I believe it's uh, on uh, close to 69th Avenue in that, uh, it would be in Sunset area, yeah. So, and by the way, so in Pinecrest, after 20 years of fighting and trying to figure out who was gonna pay for it, there was a resolution tried to get passed about a year ago where they would tax everybody a little bit, the anti-well people came out, but they wound up getting the money and being able to uh, get it onto county water. Yeah, we we have a great staff. Uh, our, our city manager obtained grant from, from the county. Um, she also is working on getting an extension so that instead of 90 days, you have to connect, you have five years. So it gives the resident uh, ample time to you know, figure out how to connect to the so water. in this case, the, the county, city, will bring the water to the street. Correct. And then you have to connect from the street Correct. to your house. Correct. When Years ago, when I, uh, uh, well, I still live in horse country, we were on well water, and it was terrible, all right? And it was a lot of farming stuff. And one day, my little daughter comes in, Daddy, Daddy, the, the water in the shower is all black. I said, that is it, all right? So we started this campaign. It was really difficult and long-term, took a couple of years, and we agreed to tax ourselves, we were able to create a special tasking district one block, right? And some people just never hooked up, but we hooked up as soon as we could. And what a pleasure it is to be able to do what that and feel really good. What a pleasure it is. And um, it's it's really uh, really important because as the, as, as the sea, level, sea level rises, our, our drinking water is, 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 is at at risk so our aquifer is is getting is at risk so it, this is really a a uh, a safety issue really drinking water when, one of our neighbors was running out years ago 
to some people, and the people came to complain about the water next door. And they said it smelled. And I said, well, that's because the, the uh, septic tank and the drain field is broken, all right? And what you're smelling is accurate to what is occurring. Correct. And the people who are getting change out from well to the county water, they're going to feel so much better. It's like, okay, we're part, part, we're part of it now, not excluded. They won't have to monitor their, their, you know, I know those people with well, they constantly have to monitor the water because it changes so often. We, we uh, are in the animal hobby business and we were having some animals die. And I would, I called our vet animal vet and he said, um, well, exotic bird vet. And he said, don't bother bringing me the bodies. Just bring me the water. And he said, oh, that, that must be for you. And he says that the um, the water wasn't enough to kill them, but it, would, but, it, but it would make them, the birds have to fight off the disease and then made them more susceptible to other diseases. So I'm happy mm -hmm. for the city, happy for the people that are there. Bam. So and what are some of the other things that the city is doing? So, um, well, uh, the city is, uh, again, addressing the parks. Uh, Commissioner Lehman has done a wonderful job uh, procuring art for, for uh Dante Fassell and, and possibly the underline. Uh, we're, 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 uh, we're giving some love to South Miami Park on the north end with restrooms. Finally. Yes, with restrooms and, and, and such. So we're, we're upgrading that. The Bob Welsh Park, again, is coming online. It's going to get, uh, and, um, and we're, we've got a design in for a new police station here. So we're, uh, we don't have the funding yet, but we're 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 uh, optimistic about uh, moving that ball. You know, it's interesting. I was on the committee twenty five years ago with Simon Codrington and some other folks, and they said, they said, oh, that, that must be that must be important. It's I'm going to take it. Why don't you talk? All right, talk right there. Tell us about the parks. <sighs> Yellow. Okay, so Yellow. Uh, yes. hi, um, we are. Um, spending about um, quite a bit of money on South Miami parks, new restroom, new facilities. Uh, uh, we are uh, doing other projects as far as uh, private sector, Madison Square is coming online, phase two. Marco Drugs is coming online, uh, is coming along. Our project, uh, there's a red and bird is 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 being uh, renovated on the uh, southeast corner of uh, Red and Bird. Michael is being renovated and is going to come online. Uh, the Win Dixie project is also pro project uh, pro uh, is uh, is being uh, is moving along, and the Petco over here on. Uh, the Petco yes. Shopping Center is also, Kimco is uh, going to uh, submit a, a, a project. And, and Let's go back to the police station for a second. Okay. As I was saying that I was <laughs> on the committee with Simon Codrington, excuse me, there was uh, some yeah, of our friends that. out uh, in the ribbon cutting, that uh, there was a plan to put up this two-story building in which there would be a gym and a community center. And people said, where are we going to get the money from? And I got to tell you, I remember it's like yesterday, Simon, God bless him, said, don't worry about the money. Let's design it, All right? Correct. And, you know, soon enough, it happened, which is they found the money. And we have a great city manager who's outstanding at finding funds and, and, and grant writing. She's, a, she's an outstanding grant writer. who has gotten us uh, millions in, in grants. So, uh, yeah, if anybody can uh, get us real close to that police station. So this sorry. police station uh, and the design, obviously, it's not com complete. Uh, but what is it? What does it look like, and where is it going to be? It's going to be where the old inspection station is. I think we've talked about that. Yes. It'll have two. It, again, it's still under design, but my understanding is going to have two, a, a, you know, entrances from two sides of the street. Thank goodness for that. So for for the you know for the benefit of the police, obviously. So it it, it we'll see you on the design. Uh, uh, it's not going to be a huge building. It's not necessary, but it will be. It will service our police. And and you know whatever they need one story two story uh, I would imagine uh, yeah at least two probably higher maybe one of, certainly one of the responsibilities of a government is to help areas all right which uh, say listen we're going to want to build over there because it's going to help everybody and I think from a social point 
what a gigantic positive move that is going to be where the police are going to be nearby and people are going to learn a little bit more trusting, especially in these, these times, right? And that it's okay and people feel much protected. I know if I call the police now, 45 seconds, a minute and a half, they're going to be here. How good is that? Right? How good is that? Yeah. How good is our police? Yeah, sometimes they're even closer. Right? Even closer. <laughs> yeah. Like you took two minutes? Yeah. So that is really very nifty. So what would happen to the if, if that goes through and they start a construction, might that be in a, two years? Or less? I, I yeah. Uh, well, the funding is, is the tricky part, obviously. But once, like you said, once you get the design, then we can focus on funding, where to get it. We're we're a very creative bunch up on that dais, and we we we, uh, we can you know we'll figure it out. And and with the city manager again with the grants and 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 she'll she'll uh, she'll figure it out. So we we have a gentleman that works here. He worked at some of the finer men's stores. I said, what would you do when people would walk in men's clothing store? He said, I'm a, people say I'm here to see a shirt. He'd lay out the whole thing, shirt, tie, suit, belt, everything, little, you know, whatever they call that thing here. And he would set out all bunch of stuff. And it was so much easier for the buyer to say, okay, I'll take that one. I'll take that one. And that's the magic of being creative and being able to present photographs or de design, say, this is terrific. Most of us have a hard time just imagining that all in our head, right? There's some people, Victor Dover certainly one of them, right. where he, he's already got a but yet you have to express that somehow. So I, I uh, do you know when there would be some public discussion about that? I don't. Um, we'll we'll put it in the budget uh, for the design. It, it's there, and then uh, uh, then then we'll 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 get you know we'll we'll see the RFP and I'll, I'll go through the process. Okay. So. And and on 60, uh, four, 68, 64th Street mm -hmm. on about 59th place, 58th place. Mm -hmm. There's a beautiful building over there. The dollar store, right, with apartments on the top, if I remember right, the, and uh, it's it is so significant, and it's such an improvement, and that really enhances people's lives when that live in the area. And say, look at it, we can, we the city cares enough to be able to bring that. Now, right next door, there's going to be another building right across the street. What is that going to be? That's phase two of of Madison Square. <coughs> um, that will be there as well. Um, uh, so it, that's expanded. Um, and 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 just down the street, uh, right here, will be uh, Marco Drugs is, is is coming. So really excited about that project. Um, and so and then across the street, we're going to have the related group with with a new uh, uh, new new public housing. Yeah, it's an interesting. Sometimes you look at actors. Look, they made it in three years and they became super. Right. No, it was thirty years plus the last three. Right. And so it is with Madison Square. It was a real struggle, but once it got done, now now there's two parts that are there. All right. And it, I drive by every couple of days. And I go, look at it, look at it. All right. And what looked to be a terribly abandoned area now is going to be built into something that's significant that people can be proud of. Absolutely. And and and. People shop there. I, I I I know people from Coral Gables come to our, that dollar store. I, I, my wife goes to that dollar store. The 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 creativity of the the city, and I'm sure there was some there were some county funds in there to redo that street and to put the green uh, entrance to the bicycle lane there and the concrete to divide this two. Yeah, very big. Uh, the, the 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 signs, uh, the gateway signs, very popular. Uh, that Grant Miller uh, mentioned them to me. Uh, so very popular, the gateway signs. I I, did, I failed that mention when you were gone. That and and uh, but that's also been and and the freebie, of course, have been two very very popular things we've done. And I see the freebie all the time, and it's really pretty nifty, right? To be able to do that. And that again is from the uh, part of the uh, the ha the half cent sales tax. Correct. This, each of the cities get a certain amount of dollars from the county, right? right? And that money was also can be spent on two road on roads. One was right behind our office on 62nd Court, I believe. We did the road there and the road over there. It's really uh, significant changes, and it sends a message to everyone, including the kids that don't quite know yet the what it takes. All right, which is look, the neighborhood is getting better, right. and uh, lot, lots of traffic circles, the slowdown circles. What do we call them? Uh, traffic calming. Calm we have a citywide traffic uh, study that's coming. That's another uh, one that's coming. And then we'll address, and we're addressing a couple of areas right now, one in the north end, uh, traffic calming. Uh, you're right, Michael. It's like we bring grains of sand and pretty soon we have a beach. Yes, and <laughs> a very good point. And we know that's how we create on images, right? 
It's these little pixels. And all of a sudden, you have, it looks like just little pixels, but it's not. And it's certainly with the re, re uh, popularization of QR codes, you look at it, it's just this little squiggly stuff. No, it's not. No, it's not. There's a whole lot more that's there. And certainly as we looked with our COVID experience, the QR codes were essentially not used, uh, invented in the early 90s. It, it never got popularized. It got outdone by the bigger social media stuff. Now, in the last year, people are going, I don't want to touch that. Well, now it's becoming a habit, right? right? And it's really nifty. And the Miami Herald's really done a great job. They'll do a story. Here, for the rest of the story, do this. And you go, holy moly. So what used to be just the full, in, uh, whether it was online or, or in print, used to be a self-contained story. You have many options of where to go for the, for the rest of the story. The QR codes were certainly a, a solution looking for a problem in their time. It's really nifty. So let's talk. So we have the uh, related group has been contracted by the county to put up some new buildings yes. to re replace the 50 plus year old two story townhouses. Correct. 6.6 .6 acres. Right. Not too far from here. Estimated budget is about how much to put up? Uh, you, you got me on, it's a, on a, around three. Around 50 million. 50. All right. Really nifty. All right. And and when we look what the city did years ago, when you put in the pool as unpopular, popular it was, depending on where you were at, it certainly was visually very nice. You have the uh, eye clinic that, that purchased that property over there and went there years ahead of time. Yes. And now they and they have this huge parking lot. God bless them. All right. And you look, so you have the school, the, the charter school that's charter there. School. And then you have the, the uh, community center uh, connected to, there's a pool there. And then you have the um, the, uh, the clinic, and you're going to have those new, I'm mean, the eye clinic, and you're going to have those beautiful new buildings. Right. I understand that in January, February, March, people are going to have to start moving out. Yeah, they over, I think they've, they're, they're making the arrangements for them to move with it. You know, they're making arrangements for them to have, to land at another place, yeah. you know. And they'll have an option to come back. Oh, yeah. And that's, that's a couple year project. Yes. It is really extraordinary. And you know we've been around for a long time. When you go, how much how much deeper can it get? But that's and how much more? But that's the way it works, exactly. right? It's got to get bad before somebody says, "I'm going to take a chance." Sorry. Right? Exactly. And if you look at the big developers, they go out in the boonies and they put up something knowing what is going to happen. Who would want to build a Walmart way out of there, way down there? Well, in about ten years, it's in the middle of a, of, 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 of yeah. housing. Uh, we see there's a, the is it the chicken place. That's on the corner. Popeye's, Popeye's chicken, chicken on US one and 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 fifty seventh and Red Road. Now, for the folks that don't know, there's a, the South Miami Post Office, rarely used anymore. All right. The other day, I'm driving in front of the Valencia and the Post Office, mm -hmm. and I see all these young people coming out of the elevator, and I said, "Oh, there's the student housing up top." And to see these kids, all right, walking down the street, what a thrill that is! What a transformation that corner has made. I tell you, it, it has it's changed, energized it, uh, fabulous, and that again, it's part of that Commerce Lane that area redevelopment. That corner is going to be uh, uh, very active. And lots of times, you know, the planners, not just the staff that does, not the developers, but the government that says, "Hey, we need to do something." So let's change this. So it so it begins the zoning on it. So it begins the invitation other people to look at an area what do you think is going to happen on progress and commerce lane in the next five years well, well hopefully there'll there'll be some massing of, of properties so right now you have a bunch of small little owners and a couple of big ones but mostly it's small little owners that you know are, are uh looking to cat or looking to cash out or stay or work out a deal um a big group has to come in and and just and uh for us, the zoning is there for 12 stories. The zoning for for rapid transit is there for that for that for those properties. And let's look at the Valencia. I think it's still called the Valencia. Yeah. That used to be owned by at least two people, maybe three or four. And Jim Harris put that together piece by piece by piece, right? And then he says, okay, now we have all the pieces. And then he put it together. And now you have a, those are all condos that are there. And certainly that condo as well as the other ones have been up and down as far as values. But today it's the best that it has been ever and we look at the metro rail they made it so beautiful right it's just like incredible and the the colors they have some black glass in there and it looks very sexy they got trees out in there right. and then you go look at these people walking with dogs and stuff. big wide sidewalks yeah yeah it's uh it, it's looking good it, it it's gonna activate it and we and 
I because I frequently go go that way. I and Larkin Hospital has has a lot of doctors walking around. They're uh, teaching university, right? And they they place students uh, all over. So we see a lot of walking traffic. So we're really pleased with that because that's what makes the difference. So Victor was right, right? It only took twenty or thirty years for people to go. Oh, I see the vision. I guess part of the question is what. It, What's going to happen in the next 20 or 30 years? And we know that what in Panama City, where the Victor Dover Group put together, correct me if I'm wrong, Victor, there are different areas where you could, uh, and in Tennessee, I think, different housing. One is no no cars, one is a little bit, and one is a lot. So pick pick whatever way you want to. Yeah. So. And l let's talk about uh, 62nd and, um, and US-1, where the shopping center, that's a traditional 1950s, 60s, 70s shopping center, a lot of asphalt, you, you drive in, and then you walk you know, the 100 feet to the store. So that Petco is, is you're talking about the Petco yes. property. That Petco is one of the uh, premier uh, money makers for that chain in, in the entire, uh, in their entire uh, portfolio. So um, it's a popular, it's a popular, I mean, it's active. Kimco is a, basically runs a commercial REIT but they're transforming into a, a commercial mixed use because of, of, of COVID, because of the retail, the hit the retail. So they're they're proposing a mixed use uh, project. That's, uh, I think it's gonna go wonderful uh, there. Uh, and Kim, mixed use, what type of? Uh, 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 underneath uh, there'll be some kind of retails, restaurant, that kind of thing on, on the bottom. And then they'll have, they'll have residential on top. Uh, it, uh, there'll be, uh, uh, there's gonna be a park in the back. Uh, I haven't seen the, entire uh entirety of it yet but uh the the, uh, the preliminary sounded good to me and uh and a very very great company uh kimco is just an outstanding and commission uh, when is that going to be before the uh before the commission wow well, that's a good question i have to ask i'll have to ask them but probably hopefully this year hopefully this calendar year there's certainly something that's happened maybe around the country but for sure here in south miami to where the people are seeing that there's a big value in, in being here in South Miami. So we have that property there at 62nd and US-1. Uh, let, let, I'll reference it as the Winn-Dixie property. Right. What's going on with that? That's moving along. Uh, they're, they're, they're there. They're moving along. That That's going to transform that street because not only is the pro, the, the, the Winn-Dixie going, uh, being uh, re redeveloped, but the street is being redesigned. So the parking in front of Casa Cuba, Will be all redesigned. my favorite place i never see you there anymore but um <laughs> the parking on that street will be all redesigned and the street actually will be moved a little bit so and so uh do you think in a year or two they're going to start on that yes and and they're going to be hundreds of people they're going to be living there if not more yes all right and they're going to be walking on the street all right yes. with their doggies and their kids and their and all that other stuff that happens yes that's what we want right. I was on South Miami Avenue, about 15th Street, uh, last week. I was stunned to see, how, and that's so. It's a residential area, uh, right outside of downtown. I was stunned to see how many babies were, you know, were being pushed there, and how many little motorcycle pink Vespas driving around, and people sitting on the park benches, and and then you realize it's just it was a few blocks from downtown, but yet it was close enough where they could enjoy themselves. Yeah, it's a yeah, it's urban. It's it's urban. Uh, it's urban. It's a new urbanism. Yes. That's what it is. Yes. And so when us the older folks get to look at that, say, that's very cool. All right. Yeah. And I was looking at some of those houses you, and they're sort of hidden by the trees and you drive it by at 40 miles an hour. You go, oh, no, no, no. That's three million. That's five oh, billion. Yeah. And, and like it was nothing. Uh, you mentioned a couple of times about the north end uh, of South Miami. Congratulations. All right. On uh, on paying attention to, to that end, which I think has been ignored. For a while, because there've been more advocates on the south end than on the north end. Yeah, so that park um, is our biggest park. It's huge, um, right? It's it, it's it's kind of out in the uh, that would be the northeast end of the city, um, kind of like on an island, but it's very used. A uh, lot of soccer uh, used there, yep. it's similar to Palmer in, in a way, but uh, less used. But it's definitely used for Palmer, and, and doesn't even have bathrooms. So we, we understand that, you know, you have your core around whatever it happens to be, around the capital, around whatever it happens to be. And as it gets out, people are not as connected, all right? I, we have, for the first time in years, we have a commissioner, Brian Corey, who was elected from that end, so he's paying attention. And maybe some of those people can have some input into the city, which they're now doing. 
And when the city spends time, energy, money up there, they'll feel part of this, right? It looks like in, in five years, there will be several thousand people. There may be uh, more people that are living here, mm -hmm. right? And that's certainly going to at some point transform the, uh, the voting block, right? Historically, it's been reserved for, I think it's 707 district, which is sort of in this area here. And it's wonderful to see that there's gonna be new, new blood, new people that are involved. And we, we hope that through uh, the COVID experience and Zoom, that those people can sort of test the water and watch and say, oh, I could do that and serve on some committees. So right now, what sort of committees does the city have that somebody could volunteer for? Well, um, I have an opening on the ERPB, which is mainly uh, the Environmental Preservation and Review Board, uh, a, 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 a architectural review board, basically, um, that uh, reviews uh, residential and, uh, and commercial plans. Um, and the planning board. Uh, we also have parks and recreation and their green task force. Green task force is a great way to-, to, 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 to And uh, typically how often do those groups meet? Uh, ERPB is twice a month, planning boards once a month. Right. And then uh, the uh, green task force I think is once a month. So, so if somebody wants to try to get in one of those committees, they could certainly call yeah, you up sure. or they could email Contact you. Contact me and I'll, I'll, I'll see what I can you know, do. Okay, we have two minutes left, all right? I wanna uh, be the first to- um, Say happy new year, all right? And all in what it where however you celebrate it, in, in, including for the one in January. And um we are my brother and I are really happy with the progress of City Hall, all right, and the and uh and of the people that are there and it seems to be functioning and, and moving quite well. Thank you, Michael. I really appreciate that. Um we've had some great commission meetings in the last especially this last one with commission really had productive meeting. We have twenty six items, we got through it. It was ruling, but really, really uh, felt good about that meeting. Uh, we have a great city manager, great staff that's really clicking on how she inherited a, a, a COVID, uh, untimely death of a vice mayor, and we've gotten through it all really remarkably well. And I appreciate you and 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 uh, Grant's uh, support. And and one of the things we recognize, they've done a lot of tests where they show one horse, see how much one horse could pull. When the two horses are pulling together, they, oh, they do a lot more than double. Absolutely. So again, South Miami Commissioner Lewis Gill, thank you for serving uh, all of us here in South Miami and Miami-Dade County in the state of Florida. Again, thank you for your time, folks. And uh, many thanks to Dexter who produced the show. Uh, folks, have a great day.